Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a retro badge style logo using Inkscape. I'll be using Inkscape version 1.0.2 which is the latest version of Inkscape at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. And I'll be using some of the colors in this palette that I created on coolers.co. Just come over here, hit export, and go with the SVG file. I will include a link to the .gpl pattern file which you guys can upload to your Inkscape patterns folder. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to how to upload custom palettes to Inkscape, so definitely check that out. But here is the logo design we'll be creating for today's tutorial, and I'll start this off by going to File, New. Here's my new document, and at the bottom you'll see my color palette. If I click this little twirl menu icon, you'll see the palette here is called Vintage Badge Logo Colors.gpl. And first off, I'm going to change the document properties. So I'll go to File, Document Properties. I'm going to change the display units to pixels as well as the units down here to pixels and set this to 1920. Hit the tab key 1080 and just exit out of here. So now we have a 1920 by 1080 document. So hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom in a bit. The first thing we'll do is create the main circle element of this logo. So I'll come over here and grab my circle tool or my ellipse tool. And now I'm just going to click and hold. And I'm going to change my color here so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So let's just click on this dark color I want to use. And let me just grab my select tool here and hit the backspace key on that to delete it. So let's grab the circle shape tool again. Click and drag, hold the control and shift key. Control will maintain a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So this is a circle and shift will draw it from the center. So I'm just gonna estimate how large I want this for now. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna grab my select tool again. And now I'll come over here to my align and distribute. And if you guys don't have this open, just use shift control A or come over here to this little twirl menu icon and click on align and distribute. So I'm going to align this relative to page and just click the center on vertical axis and center on horizontal axis buttons. That'll center that up. I can also add a stroke to this by coming over to any of these colors. I believe I went with this lighter green color here and I can shift click on it and that's going to give this a stroke color over here. Let me just double click on this to bring up my fill and stroke dialog. You can also use this shortcut key here. And the stroke paint is fine, but the stroke style, I do want to increase this a bit. Let's change the units to pixels. And I'll go with something like 10 pixels here. Actually, we're going to have to go way bigger. Let's go 25. So that's going to be fine for now. Next, I'm going to add my text to this. And we are going to do a sort of circle text. So it's going to be like an arching text. So I'll come over here and grab my text tool. And I'm going to click on my composition and with the caps lock key on, I'll type my fictitious energy company name and then I'll hit control A to select everything. And up top here in my little text tool options bar, I'm going to type pop for my font here and that's going to bring up Poppins, which is a free font. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to how to download and install free fonts for Inkscape. So definitely check that out. So this text is a bit too small right now. I'll come over here to the font size drop down and I'm going to select a bigger size. And let's also come over here and just increase the spacing between the lettering. Once we've done that, I'm going to grab my circle shape tool again, and I'm going to click and drag to draw a shape. And I'm holding control and shift once again. Let's change the color of this to something different. So let's go with orange here and shift click on this little X to get rid of the stroke. And let's come back to align and distribute. And we're going to align this relative to page. So let's just center align this again, grab the select tool, and I may need to increase or decrease this a bit. So we're going to be placing the text around this circle. So let's shift click on the text. And now I'm going to come to text, put on path. That's going to place my text around this circle. 
I'll click off of here and then just click on the circle itself, click on it again. That'll bring up my rotation handles and now I can rotate this around. And what I like to do is click and drag a ruler from the top here and just place it somewhere near these letters and that way I can get this aligned. And by that I just mean the spacing between the last letter and the first letter is the same along this little line here, this guide. So we can get rid of that guide, click off of the circle there, and let's click on this text. So we're going to click to change this color here to white and also go to path, object to path. That will disconnect it from the circle here. So now we're going to click on the circle and just grow the circle holding shift and control like so. So now we're going to use this circle for the bottom portion of the text. So we'll grab the text tool. We're going to click on the composition again with the caps lock key still on. This is just the location of my fictitious company. So control A to select all the text. We're going to change it to Poppins again. And we'll go with 64 again. Actually, let's go with something a little smaller here. So we'll go with 50 for that. And we'll change the spacing between the lettering to 10. So with the select tool, we're going to shift click on the text and the circle, which is now a bigger circle. And once again, we'll go to text, put on path, but this time we're going to use the little flip tool here with the flip icon to flip this inside of the circle. And I'm going to click off of the text here momentarily, click on the circle again. Let's come over here, shift click to create a different stroke color here and then just single click on here for a different fill color. That way we can see what's going on behind here. Now I can move the circle and actually we can align this here using the alignment tool. Let's click on the circle and use the rotation handles to rotate this. We can also drag a guide from the top like I did earlier. And that way we can get the letters here nice and even. Let me make sure I'm double clicked on the circle once again. So right about there looks pretty good. So let's click on this guide and drag it off. So let's click off the circle, click on the text and go to path, object to path. And now we're going to delete this circle. Click on the text and we're going to change the color of that to white. So there we have our text and you can always click on both lines of these text and just align them, make sure they are center aligned there. So next we're going to add the little sun icons. So to do that, once again, I'll grab the circle shape tool or the ellipse shape tool and I'm going to hold shift and control to draw a circle. Click on this yellow color and then shift click on the little X color. And by the way, if you aren't using this palette or any palette, you can always double click on where it says fill here to be taken to fill and stroke and play around with the colors here. But we've got a palette which makes it much quicker, much easier in my opinion. But I'll hold control, zoom in, and let's grab the Bezier curves tool or the paths tool. And I'm going to click once, hold the control key and click a second time. These are going to be our little sun rays. I'm going to grab the select tool. And I'll come over here and shift click on the yellow and we can double click on the stroke to bring up the fill in stroke dialog if you didn't have it open already. Now let's navigate over to stroke style and we're going to make the stroke a little thicker. So that looks pretty good there. Now what I'll do is go to path, stroke to path, and then go to path, path effects. So here we have our path effects dialog. I'm going to click this little plus button here. And if I scroll down, you'll see we have rotate copies. So I'll click on that. So I have my number of copies set to six. And what I'll do is come over here to my nodes tool. And if I hold control and zoom in, I can grab the center node here and just drag it. And I'm going to drag it towards the center of the circle that we created for our sun. You can always use guides and place them at the exact center here if you want this to be a bit more precise. But in this case, I'm okay with these being a little off. So I'm going to grab the select tool again. I'm going to shift click on the middle of the sun, go back to align and distribute, and I'm going to change the relative to, to last object. And we're just going to center align these objects. And I'm also going to hit control G to group these and then use the transform handles to scale this down a bit. And then we can drag this onto our composition. And I can always scale it down a bit more. 
And now what I'll do is change the alignment here to page once again, and then center align this. And you can either center align this to the page, or you can just center align it based on the eye test here, whatever you think looks best with the logo. It's up to you. I think that looks pretty good though. So I'll hit Control D to duplicate that. And now I'm gonna click on this, so we'll have two of these. And holding Control, I'll drag this over to the other side. And then Shift click on both of these, Control G to group them, and then align these to the page. All right, next we're going to create the vector battery element. So I'll come over here once again, grab my circle shape tool, and let's just move over here to the right side. So basically I'm just gonna eyeball the top portion of the lettering in the bottom here. It doesn't have to be exact while we're creating this right now, but I'm going to click and drag to create a cylinder. This is gonna be the top of the cylinder, so this is just an oval shape. And let's come over here. We're going to left click on the orange and shift click to get rid of the stroke for now. Grab the select tool. Control D is going to duplicate this and I'm just gonna hold the Alt key as I drag this down. And what I like to do is shift click on here and move this over and see how this looks over here. So it's too tall right now. So let me hit Control Z. We're gonna shorten this up and also maybe widen this a bit like so. So next what I like to do, I'll click off of here Click on this top one, Control D is going to duplicate that, and then we can go to Object, Object to Guides. So now we have guides going around our object. Now we're gonna grab the square tool or the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to come over here, click and drag this, and make sure your snapping is turned on over here. And that's going to ensure that your rectangle snaps to the guides. Grab the select tool, hold control, zoom in a bit. So we're just going to drag this until the bottom portion of the rectangle overlaps with the oval. And same with right here. So there now you can see we have a cylinder. So next what I'll do is come over here and I'm clicked on the top oval here, control D to duplicate it. And then I'll come down here to my palette, left click on this dark blue and then I'm going to hold control and shift and drag this in. Hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. So you can see our battery starting to take shape here. I'll come up top to this top oval and then down here, shift click on the bottom oval. Come over here, shift click to create a stroke. And you can double click on the stroke and see what size it is right now under stroke style. So 10 is probably pretty good. So I'll click off of here. And now let me get rid of these guys. I can click on it and hit the backspace key. So you can always tell it's selected when it turns red. Now I'm going to select all of this, Control G to group it, Control D to duplicate it. I'll click off of the group and then click back on the duplicate and hold Control and Shift to scale this down. And then I'm going to drag it up while I hold the Control key. So obviously this top part is way too tall. I'll hold Control, zoom in. I'll hit Control shift g to ungroup this, and let's click off of here. Now I'm gonna click on the rectangle and just click and drag the handle to bring this in a bit. And then I can select the oval shapes, hold Control and drag this down to drag it in straight line mode to about right there. So now I need to regroup these, so I'm gonna click on this bottom shape, shift click, shift click, and shift click one more time. Let's make sure we have all the shapes selected here. Control G, that's going to group all those together. And you can always use your arrow keys to relocate these if you need to. The final element we need to place here is going to be the lightning bolt. So let me move over again a little bit to the right, grab the Bezier curves tool, and I'm going to click to create a node there, hold the control key to draw in straight line mode, and we're gonna click to create another node. And then we're gonna come out a little bit to the left. So just your standard lightning bolt shape, hold the control key, click. This one we're gonna keep a little bit to the right of this, that first node, hold the control key, click. And finally the last node here. And hold control for this part. Let's create the other side of the lightning bolt here. And just connect that. So now I'll left click on here to change the color of this to yellow, shift click to get rid of the stroke, 
grab the select tool and hold the control key as I scale this down. And we can shift click on the battery here and we're gonna come over to align and distribute again. We're going to align relative to the last object which was the battery and then just center align that. So now we're going to click and drag our mouse over all the elements here, control G to group them. Now we can move this over here and we can also come back to align, change this to page and we're gonna center align this both vertically and horizontally. So just a couple of finishing touches and then we are done. So first I'm going to change the background color by using the rectangle shape tool and I'm gonna draw a rectangle here, left click on your yellow color Grab the select tool and we're going to change the size of this to 1920, hit the tab key, 1080. And we'll just center align this on the page. And we're going to click to bring this to the very bottom of the stacking order. Finally, I'll click on the circle here, control D to duplicate it, shift click on white, and then left click on the X. So now we have a white stroke here. Let's double click on the stroke and we're gonna keep stroke style open. But what I'll do is I'm gonna drag this out while holding control and shift, and I'll release, and then I'll come over here and I'm gonna change the width of this to 10, and we're gonna to have to adjust this a bit, like so. And you might wanna turn off snapping for this part. So I also wanna just tweak the lightning bolt, so I'll grab my node tool, hold control, zoom in, and I'll click on the lightning bolt, and I'm just going to tweak some of these elements. Control shift G to ungroup that, and move this down, and that's gonna be good enough right there. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And you can click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.